I'd like to welcome you into my studio today to guide you along the steps involved in creating this drawing. And we're going to focus a little bit more this time on the classical approach to portraiture. I'm going to be using medium vine charcoal and I'm going to apply a tone over the surface of the paper first, just like this. And then after I have the paper covered, I'm going to just uh, smoothen it out a little bit with the paper towel and that's how I'll prepare my paper. And here we have our model Steve and I'm going to keep an image of him to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as I develop the drawing. Uh, we're going to take a good look at the simple elements involved in creating a basic portrait drawing. So let's start with an oval. Just a simple oval. And I'm going to use this to help me identify where I want to place the mass of the head. And I'm going to say the word mass a lot. So a mass is just something like this. It's just a big area of value, just a big shape of value. So let's say that the head is somewhat over here. Now let's look at this from a classical standpoint. So, the gesture is the first thing that you would want to describe in uh, the beginning of a portrait drawing. So, let's, let's give this generic egg-shaped looking thing a center line. Now, this is the center line of this egg. And this egg is just standing in place for Steve's head. Just like that. Very simple. Now, let's add an axis. For the eyes onto this egg. Somewhere about here, just a simple big line right here. And let's imagine it wrapping all the way around the egg like this. Nice and simple. Now let's add the axis of the nose somewhat over here. And let's let that axis follow all the way around. You don't have to be that neat with this. You really don't. Just have to keep things simple. Now then, the axis of the mouth. So the axis of the mouth, eh, probably about here. Again, I'm, I'm kind of conceptualizing what I'm looking at, and that's a very classical way of looking at the portrait, is in terms of a conceptualized model, such as this egg with the axes. Now the ear. The ear for this gesture, that is, he's sitting pretty much still and kind of at a three-quarter turn relative to us. Now the ear is going to lie somewhere in between the axis of the eyes and the axis of the nose. So let's just do another oval for that. Why not? Ear goes right about there. And let's not forget even though we can't see it, the bottom of the chin, so a little mark right there, and the top of the hairline. Top of the hairline somewhat about here. And before long we're going to have to give him a neck. And you can't really see it because of the facial hair, the beard, and all that stuff, so I'm going to assume his head is somewhat like this. Again, very conceptualized image. Shoulders going about there. Very, very simplified. Alright, so now let's get into some more of the uh, anatomical tools that we can use in developing the portrait drawing. So, here we have back of the skull, and I know I'm pushing it. I know you can't see it on the image, so I'm just going to illustrated for you and then I'm going to get into more of the specific shapes that uh, we see on Steve. So we have back of the skull right here and usually a nice, sa a nice safeguard for these proportions is that this distance here from the chin to the top of the head is somewhat equal to this distance here from the corner of the face right there to the corner of the back of the skull. Now then let's look at the eye sockets. Now when I'm painting, uh, you usually see me 
just create like a big mass there. And I'm still going to keep that kind of uh, mentality. So one corner of the eye socket to the left of your screen is going to go here. And then the other corner of the eye socket is going to go somewhat there. And now we're going to get into the outside shape. So the outside shape uh, is somewhat like this. We can use uh, just the peripheral view of our eyes, just looking at a glance from the side just to see what these angles look like. Hardly any information here. This makes an angle up here. Very simple. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3 angle four, something like that. Basic shape, like this one. And then, of course, it wouldn't be Steve if I didn't have some type of shape uh, for the facial hair. So let's follow through from the side of the uh, outside shape. So it comes, maybe starts somewhat about here. And I'm looking at this distance relative to this. So again, remember I established the top of the hairline, top of the hair, and now the the beard It's going to come, let's use a vertical gesture. This is my vertical gesture, and the vertical gesture is telling me that the beard comes a little bit further out, like this, a little bit further out here. And then we have the shape here for the beard. Nice and simple probably comes to about there. Again, just a simple shape for the beard. So now let's get into some more shape-like uh, thought processes. Now then, for the simple shapes that we're going to want to build, let's look at uh, first the shapes of light and dark. So here's the corner of the eye socket, and if it looks somewhat like a robot or somewhat like sunglasses, then you're pretty much in a good place uh, because it's kind of a generic looking rectangular thing that we have for the eye socket. And we're going to use this now to uh, help us with the simple shape of light and shadow. So let's see, there's the zygomatic bone right there. That is the cheekbone. And then it's going to make a little angle about here. Something like that. It's going to move up and then down. And then here we have another corner of the side of the shadow. Everything over here is still in shadow, but it's the shadow of the beard. The hair comes up about there, kind of mimics on a horizontal this little uh, shape here for the side of the eye socket. It goes up like this, then goes up like that. And I'm making all these decisions based on uh, just optically comparing things to one another. Here we have the corner of the nose. Makes a little shape like this. A little shape down here. Now remember I said the bottom of the nose was going to be somewhere over here. And uh, a good thing to keep in mind is that those axes that you place in there, uh, those don't have to be set in stone. That's pretty much just your first, uh, that's your preliminary guess as to where the actual placements of the features are going to go. Let's just keep it nice and simple, just light and shadow, just like this. And let's go ahead and mass in the rest of the dark shape. Very simple, just like that. Just massing that all in. I'm even going to group in the beard. And I'm going to group the beard into this massing because I'm going to come back with my paper towel and I'm going to uh, get this light back. So here we have the paper towel, and let's get the light back for the beard. Something like that. And let's cover the, the ear now. Let's just have a simple line. Why not for the corner of the ear? Maybe two lines. One line and another line. Alright, so now uh, let's look again at the outside shape. So let's work inside shapes and then outside shapes simultaneously. Sometimes when we put one bit of information, it kind of helps clarify another bit of information. So 
So I'm going to use something now uh, called a stump, and I'm going to use this just to push the charcoal into the grain of the paper. So just like this, push that into the grain of the paper. It's okay that it picks some of it off. It's all right. It's not going to destroy the drawing. A little corner there that we had for the zygomatic bone. Another corner back here. And we're good to go. Now let's fill in that dark mass yet again. And I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to keep repeating this process just so that the, uh, the charcoal gets embedded into the grain of the paper. Very simply. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing with the nose. So again, there's a little shape right here. Don't ever be afraid to lose information. Uh, just know that you are in the process of building something. Let's keep the drawing as a building process. Let's keep that in mind that it is a building process. Now I'm going to come back in with a chamois cloth. That is what this is. And again, if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, that information is going to be typed in the description box below. So I'm going to use the chamois now to peel out some of the lights. So here we have a little corner here. Let's not forget a little shape. Let's have a little shape for his eye. Just a little mark like that. Just a simple mark. See, something like this for an eye is much easier to move if you get it in the wrong place. And then we can come back in and refine some little shape like that into a more refined shape later. Alright, now then let's go and uh, further describe the light, the shape of the light. So I'm going to take out some more charcoal there and uh, we have more of an angle here like that take out a little more charcoal up here just like that very simple take some more out of here and then a little more out of here kind of they look kind of like chisel marks, don't they? Uh, I'm thinking of this very structurally. So classically speaking, I am creating little chops, like planes. They look like planes, like flat slabs that a sculptor would carve out of a piece of clay or out of uh, a marble. Let's get the light for the beard. Little shape right there. Peel out a little more here. Just like that. Now let's go back in with the with the charcoal, the medium vine charcoal, and let's further articulate this light and shadow shape now. The nose is making a little shape like this. Have the nostril over here. So this is pretty much the bit of information I want. Straight lines and angles still, even for the small shapes. Straight line here, straight line there. Now we're going to have, say, straight line here, and then straight line here. Now again, uh, this little shape here is going to be kind of important that we articulate uh, kind of precisely now this shape here in relation to this shape here. So I'm going to switch to another tool to try and get uh, that shape more finely articulated in just a little bit. So for now, let's go back in. Another shape here. And now we're going to have another shape here. And let's push this up a little bit higher than need be. And I'll tell you why in just a bit. Fill in some more value here. Alright, 
Now I'm going to switch to using a paintbrush to get more of a refined shape. So uh, this is a size 2 filbert bristle brush and it's a uh, it's dry and um, I'm going to use this to get more of a refined shape. Now then I'll show you how this is going to work with that uh, paint brush. So we're going to want to get a more refined shape here for the shadow uh, being casted by the nose. So there's a little turn right here. Notice how the paintbrush is picking up some of the charcoal and it's leaving uh, kind of a crisp edge like that. And uh, that's what's going to help us get more of a uh, finite shape for the shadow shape. And again, this goes up just like this. This paintbrush is wonderful to make these kind of adjustments. This goes makes a little shape up here now. Very simple. Now this is going to, let's see, it's kind of hard for me to see. I'm kind of far from my photo reference, but this is going to make an angle like that. And then this is actually going to have a bit of light coming out right there. Nice and simple, just like that. And now, remember I said I wanted to pull out a little bit more of this than need be? I'll tell you why. I'm switching to my paper towel, and I'm going to subtract a little bit of this off. So just like that, subtracting a little bit off. Then I'm going to switch to my paintbrush. So subtracting a little bit of that off. It's actually leaving me a nice half tone now. So we're now introducing the idea of a half tone. So all of this is now a half tone. Half tone meaning it's just a little bit darker as we get closer to the light. Here we are back with the paintbrush. And now we're going to get, we're going to kind of herd the charcoal into more of a uh, defined shape for this little area now. That goes in somewhat like that. And uh, I say this a lot in my painting videos, but in drawing as well, make sure to always stand back. And stand back from your drawing uh, to get a outside perspective or get a perspective of what your drawing actually looks like. Because your drawing may look to you a certain way uh, say five inches away and look a completely different way five feet away. And now I'm going to further try and articulate this little shadow shape here. Notice how I'm kind of purposely not going into any kind of small details with the eyes yet and that is on purpose. I'm really just trying to build this strong light and shadow pattern based on uh, these simple forms. And again, let's uh, let's think about the corner of the side of the face. So he is in three quarter relative to me. So that means his nose is making a shape relative to uh, this outside corner. So I'm going to be seeing less of this little shape here and a little bit more of this shape here. So I'm going to cut back into this shape a little bit and uh, cut back into here and correspondingly the forehead let's make a vertical gesture the forehead comes up to here and then his eyebrows eyebrows let's just make it as a small mass for now just like that very simple let's switch now to a kneaded eraser so this is a kneaded eraser and if you're not familiar with a kneaded eraser kneaded eraser is pretty much kind of like kind of like play-doh it's like a uh, kind of tough play-doh that you can um, manipulate like this and it's kind of nice to get like a, a little edge so we'll get a little edge like this and uh, let's use it now to draw a little bit all right so the eraser hopefully will pull out a little more of the charcoal than the chamois and the chamois 
hopefully pulls out a little more charcoal than the paper towel. So you kind of have an order there, don't you? You have uh, from darkest to lightest, you have the paper towel, chamois, and then the kneaded eraser. And that's the nice thing about working in this uh, subtractive way. Subtractive meaning I'm peeling out the lights is that you have a very nice uh, variety of values and a uh, variety of tones that you can get out of your materials as opposed to trying to go in with like a piece of uh, graphite and try to perfectly shade in each little value. Instead all of this kind of does the grunt work for you. So let's use the kneaded eraser to get more of the shape here for the beard. Just like that. And uh, it's not taking all of it off. So the, the other reason I'm using a toned uh, piece of paper is that I'm actually going to switch into uh, white pastel. Like a very classical drawing, if you think of like a Raphael or something. Or Michelangelo, where you have the red and white chalk. I mean, it's not going to be done in that kind of way, but it's still going to be kind of like uh, with chalk and charcoal. Uh, so let's take actually a little bit of light here. Let's create a nice little crisp edge right there. Very simple edge. Just like that. And uh, why not try and get this highlight, even though I'm probably going to go into that with the, uh, the white pastel. Let's get a little, a little glimpse of the highlight there. And so now I'm going to go in further articulate the eyes. Now with the eyes, I'm going to go in and first try to establish the peaks of convexity. So that is the top of the curves, the tops of the curves. So here's one peak of convexity right here, the top of the eyelid. And the bottom peak of convexity, hmm, that's tough to see. It's somewhat, maybe down here, very simple. Now let's look at the other side. Uh, now let's look at the angle between the eyes before we do that. The angle between the eyes is somewhat like this. Somewhat like that. And so I'm actually going to go in with my uh, paintbrush since I'm already holding it. I'm going to subtract a little bit right here. Just like that. Subtracting a little bit. And I'm going to come back in and uh, look at the peaks of convexity for this eye. So since there, there's a little bit of an angle here, uh, the peak of convexity for this eye is going to be a little bit lower relative to this eye. Uh, so let's subtract a little bit more with the paintbrush. And let's just level this shape a little bit for now. Leveling meaning, let's just do that. Let's just flatten it out a little bit for now. All right, so the peak of convexity, the peak of convexity here is somewhat right there, a little bit lower relative to this one. So let's make that angle somewhat like this. And then this shape actually goes down. And then the peak of peak of convexity here is going to be somewhat down here. And let's follow through and get the rest of the shape for the eye. So the shape is somewhat like this. Now somewhat like that. So let's just keep in mind that we are trying to build these structures. Very classical way of thinking. We are building these structures. We are not just trying to copy them down. So uh, what I mean by building is that that shape was clearly not looking like an eye, but it was getting me started. I at least know that that is here. 
that that peak of convexity is there. So with a little bit of patience, I'm just going to level this out again. And then add the bottom shape right here. And I'm going to have to stand back and make sure the shape works. It's kind of like classical sculpture. You ever look at classical sculpture, Greek sculpture, and you see that the eyes are kind of just generic, uh, idealized looking uh, shapes like this. That's the classical kind of idea, keeping it nice and simple. So somewhat like that. Tell you what, if you're having trouble with one shape like I am with this one, move to the corresponding shapes and then come back to it. So this eye right here, I'm seeing a little bit of light just there, just like that. Seeing a little bit of light there. And uh, let's put in that highlight. So that highlight somewhat here. A little bit to the left of the peak of convexity. So it's like, let's say it's there. And then we have the pupil. The pupil of the eyes right here. Something like that. And now the upper eyelid. I'm actually going to have to use the, the brush to push this shape down. Just like that. Very simple. And then I'm going to add the upper eyelid right there, the crease. So here's, again, the peak of convexity that I was talking about. And then this is angling down like this. Very simply. And if you don't get something right away, like uh, say the shape of the eye, it it just means you need to go to other areas and figure out those areas a little bit and then come back. Very simple. All right, so now I'm gonna level out this shape. So I'm just gonna level it out a little bit. And then kind of like, in this doing this kind of motion subtract a little bit here we want to own the materials that we're working with we want our materials to work for us and then with the charcoal just add this value right here then I'm going to switch back to the needed eraser and solidify this angle here this angle right here is kind of shooting straight into the tear ducts. Tear ducts being right there, so it's shooting right there. Makes a little shape up here, just like that. Now let's follow through to the bottom of the eye. Again, really trying to uh, optimize the materials that I'm using, so I'm switching back and forth between the a paintbrush and the eraser. So I'm using the paintbrush here uh, to further get a nicer crisp shape for the shadow. Just like that. Then I'm going to come back in with the kneaded eraser. Uh, noticing that there's a little bit more light here. I'm going to pull that light out right there. Just like that. And then I'm going to notice that that needs to be leveled. So let's level it with the, the eraser, just like this, very simply. And now I'm going to stand back and see how the shapes are working in relation to one another. And I'm going to say that this shape may need to be pushed a little bit to the left, like that. So I'm using the paintbrush to do that. Very simply. And while I push it back, I'll add a little shape for the tear duct, why not? Now let's reestablish this light that we had. Uh, 
And so I think that this crease needs to go down. Again, I'm really trying to reason with the information that I'm being presented with. So it's a little shape like that. And now let's look at the this little corner again. Makes a little shape like that. Then this makes a little angle here. Now I'm going to use this shape to help me guide this shape. So now I see that I may need to subtract some more over here. So this right here is the globella. So I'm subtracting a little bit to get more of a refined shape for the globella. I'm going to use this to get some of the light on the eye. A little bit just right there. Nice and simple. Now the light of the eye, the sclera, so the white of the eye, remember the white of the eyes are not white, but in any case there's a little bit of a lighter value here, and then this is going to angle up a little bit like that. I'm going to use the paintbrush to create more of that shape here. The curves in here. I'm going to do the same with this I just have a feeling that this has to come lower. And that's how it is sometimes. Sometimes you don't really have a finite measurement uh, for what needs to happen, but you kind of feel it out. So I'm kind of feeling that this needs to come down a little bit. And back to the peak of convexity right there. And uh, let's give them more of the eyebrows. This little shape right here for the eyebrows. Just like that, nice and simple. Let's add in some little strands of hair. Let's use the brush to do that, just little strands like this, nice and simple. Just have fun with it, really. Now another shape here, another little dark shape here for the, the eyebrows. And we'll come back in with the paintbrush just like that. Now let's go ahead and switch back to the the eraser and level out a little bit more on the bottom here because we're going to get ready to go into our next tool, which is going to be our white pastel. Well, I'm actually going to use a cream pastel first. The cream pastel is going to be a little bit uh, darker than white pastel. So I'll go into the white pastel at the end. And again, if you want to know exactly what materials that I'm using, that information is going to be typed into the description box below. So I'm going to just get a little bit more of this edge here. Now let's get into the pastel. Alright, so now I'm going to be switching between the kneaded eraser and the uh, cream pastel. So the cream pastel, the cream pastel is a uh, a little bit a little bit darker than the white pastel, and I I do that on purpose so that I have room after I'm done with the cream pastel uh, to move up in the value scale or down in the value scale, however you want to look at it, just so I have room to make the values lighter. So with the kneaded eraser, I'm just going to level this shape out now, just like that. And I'm going to come back in with the white pastel, the cream white pastel, a little shape just like that. And now I'm going to use this to give me more information into the light shapes of the face. So let's use the kneaded eraser and level out just a little bit right here on the uh, corner of the side of the cheekbone. Cut in a little bit there. And uh, tell you what, I'm going to use the brush just to subtract a little bit on the nose to give me more of a tone. Just like that. Now I'm going to come back in with the cream pastel and get 
a shape, create a shape for this right here. This cuts in like that. So let's describe the bulb of the nose now. Cuts in like this. Maybe it goes a little bit lower. And it's all right if some of the pastel mixes with the charcoal, it'll be all right. And so now the uh, kneaded eraser can kind of act like a stump for the pastel. So let's use this to distribute a little bit of the pastel up here and use it to subtract a little bit over here. So pretty much like, like a, a pencil, depending on how much pressure you apply, you will get a gradation of tone. So I'm, pr I'm applying a little less pressure here to get a light but not a bright light. And now a little more pressure here will give me the highlight just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, just etch in a few more little marks here. So another classical uh, technique that is oftentimes used is hatching. So uh, hatching is something like this. So you make each shape of shading, if you will, in, a, in the direction following the form. So this little corner of the eye socket is wrapping down like this. So I'm going to hatch in that direction. And then cross hatching is when you make another little almost diagonal like shape across like that. And I cut into this shape here just a little bit. Very simply. Then let's hatch over here. Now this little area of the face goes a little bit out like that. So we'll hatch in this direction. And then of course can't forget the hair so let's use now the cream pastel to get a little shape here for the hair. Just like that, very simple. Now let's use the eraser just to peel out a little bit more and it's okay if you level out that little edge it'll be all right. So let's use that now to get more of a defined edge over here. Still using straight lines and angles as I do this. Very simply. I'm going to move a little bit further down just like that. And then there's going to be a little plane here. Uh, so let's go ahead and use the eraser first. So with the eraser, I'm going to peel out a little bit more here, a little bit higher up there. Tell you what, there are two little, two little divots here. So one here, another there, just like that, very simply. And then there's going to be another little path of light over here. So I'm going to hatch maybe in this direction. Uh, so hatching usually isn't done vertical and horizontal, but rather usually at, at angles. So that's why I'm kind of angling the hatch like this. Let's add a little bit more here. Angling that way. And then there's a little more of a shape here, so let's hatch that in like this. Then this shape is going like this, so let's hatch that in like that. Very simply. Hatch this in like that. And I'm going to actually shade a little bit so I don't have too uh, jarring of a line like that. I'm going to shade a little bit there. Then I'm actually going to follow through with that kind of thinking down here. So I'm going to use the eraser again to peel out just a little bit here. Just level out this shape a little bit. Now I'm going to peel, or sorry, I'm going to apply the pastel 
giving me a crisp edge there. And uh, let's experiment. Let's let it pull into the charcoal a little bit. Why not? Almost creates like a color. It's kind of nice. Okay, so now this shape we can further articulate it. Comes a little further down like that. And now let's go ahead and apply some hatching. So this form goes in this kind of direction. And uh, when you do hatching, you might want to have a very sharp tip. So this tip is getting almost too dull, uh, but it should still work. So I'm hatching there. And now I'm going to apply just a little bit more light here, hatching in this direction. And again, I'm going to use the eraser just to kind of uh, mush the uh, pastel together just to create a little bit of a flat plane there. And I'm going to switch back to the the paintbrush just to uh, take, let's take some of the charcoal from here and then just kind of mix in this tone here. Very simple. And let's use it again to get this value. Again this is kind of the the side plane of the cheekbone and it makes a little shape like this. Cuts down like that. And now I'm going to switch back to the eraser to further distinguish this plane from this plane. So this plane right here is getting even lighter. Again, thinking in terms of planes is a very classical way of looking at shapes of value. So this whole thing is a lighter plane than that area. So we, let's even let the paintbrush make some of the smaller shapes for us. Just like that. Very simple. It's a little bit too much of a little hook there, so I'm going to soften it just a little bit there. Now I'm going to use the pastel to get a little corner here for the eye, the eyelid, and maybe some little hatches here. Why not? The light of the eye. Let's just use this. Now, there are some little bits of hair here that are in light, so I could either go into the, the brush or the kneaded eraser or the pastel. Let's use the pastel. A little hair over here. Let's just have fun with it. This isn't a very professional thing to do, but let's just have fun with it. Just drawing out little hairs over here. Very simply. Little indications of hair. Kind of went overboard with that, but we're having fun, right? So let's move this little shape here. Now I'm going to switch back to the eraser. And with the eraser, I'm going to take out this uh, outline. I'm going to subtract somewhat over here. Level this out. And now I'm going to go in with the pastel. And with the pastel, I'm going to add now the a more distinguished shape right here. Just like that. More of a distinguished shape. Now you can't really have light without dark. Now can you? So I'm going to go in and darken this shape here now just a little bit more. And just applying a little bit more pressure. Now the uh, stump that we used uh, before uh, to mush in the charcoal into the paper is going to come in handy now because since there was some charcoal already mushed into the paper, again, that's why I kind of wanted something with a little bit more of a medium to rough tooth in terms of the paper texture. Uh, so since that's kind of built into the paper now, I'm able to actually make my 
values a little bit darker. Notice now how that got much darker. And so I'm actually going to I'm actually going to apply this half tone here. And so I'm going to go and just overdo the shape for now like this. And I go back in with the paintbrush. And just like this and try to get a nice little gradation of values. And at the same time, I'm going to further further solidify the shadow shape. See there's a little almost like a little corner there. Then this flattens out up here. I'm going to switch to the chamois and get a little bit more of the light of the hair, the light mass of the hair, somewhat like this. Somewhat like that, cutting at that kind of angle. And let's just add a little, little touch of this here. Why not? And now switching to the brush. I'm going to spread, whoops, wrong side there. I'm going to spread a little bit more of this tone over here. And let's use the paper towel. Remember, the paper towel subtracts a little bit less than the chamois. So just like that, with the paper towel, very simple. Now there are some areas of the hair over here on this corner that are receiving even less light so they're getting darker over there so let's go ahead and shade them in and applying less pressure than I applied here so that I can have a uh, not as dark of a value. And so the back of the ear here, remember it was just two lines? So let's add a little shape here now for the corner of the ear. And uh, this whole area is actually getting a little darker, so let's add another line to the ear, somewhat like this. Remember, the ear exists between the axis of the eyes and the axis of the nose. A little bit of a shape right there. Not much to it. A little corner right there. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch between the paper towel the chamois, the kneaded eraser, and the uh, white pastel. Now I'm going to start off with the paper towel, subtract some of this, and tell you what, let's go into the background first. So let's just add more of a tone here for the background. Just like this. Let's just add more of a tone, just so we can have a little bit more contrast. Just like that. Very simple. And we can use the background to further solidify this shape here. Comes up like that. Very simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply that value up here. Nice and simple. All right, so let's cut in a little bit more into the beard than need be. So like that, cut in a little bit more than need be. And actually, let's give him a shoulder before I forget. Steve, you have a shoulder. There is the shoulder, just so we don't have a floating head. We don't want to... Uh, decapitate people. It's always nice to have a little glimpse of the shoulders. Let's put another little glimpse here. It's always nice to have a glimpse of the shoulders. Let's put a little dark here actually for the collar. Why not? Let's create a little vignette here. A vignette is an area of the drawing or the painting that is left unfinished uh, to complement the areas that are more refined. So uh, let's just do that. Just a little glimpse of uh, something existing here. Now then, let's get back to the beard. So I'm going to go with the uh, paper towel first, pull out some of these little edges here, just like that. going to have the materials do most of the grunt work for me. And let's take some of it off of here and apply it there just to get a little, little value there. And let's do the same over here actually. Why not? 
take some of it off of there and get more of a little value here. Now switching to my chamois, I'm going to pull a little bit of value now very strategically. Now I'm not going to pull value here or here. I'm going to pull some more value here. And I'll tell you why. Because the this area of the beard is facing the light a little bit more. So the light's kind of coming at this angle and hitting this area of the beard first. So even though it is facial hair, let's still give it that kind of three-dimensional thinking. So just a little more, let's take a little bit more of the charcoal out of here. And then actually over here, there might be some that we need to take off. Yeah, I like that. Now what about a mouse? He has a mouse. So let's go ahead and give him a mouse while we're doing this. So I'm guessing it's somewhat over here. And I'm making this decision just using my eye. So I'll tell you what, a line right here. Line right here. Just two lines for now and I'm gonna stand back. Standing back helps me see how these shapes relate to one another. And now there's a little bit of light here beneath uh, these two lines. So let's get a little more light right here. Just like that, nice and simple. And I'm going to stand back. Now I see that there needs to be more of a darker shape here. So let's take some of it off the side here with the brush and just add it there. Nice and simple. And I'm going to do the same with this corner here. Subtract some from here. Add it here. Just like that. A little more. Just like that. Very classical way of working where you let the materials uh, do a lot of the work for you. And what is this light here? It doesn't make sense, right? So after standing back, I did see that this light is kind of suspect. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of mush that together. Just like that. And I'm going to stand back again. And now that's starting to look like a mouse beneath the beard. So again, back to the chamois. Pull out some more light here. Just like that, a little bit of light here, a little bit of light there, and some light here. Why not? Even though I said I wasn't going to pull any of the light out there, let's just do that. And now I'm going to go back in with the stump and try to, or sorry, with the paintbrush and try to get more of a edge here for the beard. Just like that. Now I'm going to switch to the eraser. Now with the eraser, I'm going to go back to this area first, this area here that's closer to the light, and try to subtract as much as I can, yet leaving some of this dark because this area here is a little darker. So just like that, hopefully I don't throw the, uh, the drawing off of my board here. It seems that way, that it's going to fall off. But in any case, let's just uh, try to get more of a gradation of value here that's lighter. Just like that. Now let's switch to a different medium. Now this is uh, the white pastel that I was talking about and let's be careful not to put white pastel everywhere. And be careful with that because the white pastel, if you look around the room where you're sitting now, the white pastel is to the paper, it is the value that when you are looking at a bright light, so kind of like deer in headlights, these are the headlights. You don't want to put the headlights everywhere. You want to orchestrate where you want these lights to go. So there is a light here. So very cautiously, I'm etching that light in there. See that? 
very cautiously. Now then, some little areas of hair here are going to be receiving more light. So let's go ahead and kind of etch in those areas of the hair. Just like that. Very simply and very cautiously at the same time. I don't want to put this everywhere. Just want to put it where it needs to be to show the strength of the light. The strength of the light being concentrated in this area. So let's go ahead and just very easily just apply just a tad bit of it. Now I'm going to switch to my eraser to kind of smudge that in there. Now remember the eraser, the kneaded eraser kind of acts like a stump would with the uh, white pastel. Just like that and even leaving some little traces of it. Just like that. I'm going to switch back to the cream pastel and get some of these lights here. A little bit of light here for the hairline. Just a little bit of light. Not too much. And in fact, this value may be too sharp. So let's go in with the. Let's try the paintbrush first. See what that does. Yep, it's subtracting some. While we have this value on the brush, let's add some of these little dark shapes here. Why not? A little dark shape right there. Let's let the materials do a lot of the work for us. And again, this, uh, this little shape here is getting out of proportion. So let's push that down. And at the same time, let's further solidify uh, this shape. So I just switched to a different uh, piece of charcoal just because it had less of a sharp edge. And so just uh, I like to sharpen my uh, charcoal sticks whenever I'm shading an area like this, a non-specific area, just so that I can just have a fine point uh, when I get into smaller areas like I did there. Just like that. It's a darker value over here. I'm actually going to stump this corner of the back of the hair just so I can get a darker value. So I'm going to push that into the grain of the paper just like I did there earlier. I'm going to push that in there. Yes, I know that I have too much of his hair showing uh, and I, I tend to kind of make things a little bit bigger than need be so that I can come back in uh, and add more of a accurate shape, something like that. So this shape now comes down a little bit like this. And again, hopefully this can this can show you that that you don't have to very carefully and painfully draw out every perfect little outline. Um, and believe me, I like to do that. Actually, I like to draw out my outlines and have them as perfectly uh, mapped out as possible. Whenever uh, I'm trying to get super precise. But I just find this to be more fun to work in this kind of way. And it's a very classical approach uh, where you try to optimize what your materials can do. So now uh, there's a little value here that I'm missing for the bottom of the ear. And it's kind of like matching up horizontally with the nose. So let's just put that in there, somewhat like that. Yeah, that'll do. So again, this the hair, I've got to push it a little more to the right. And uh, let's add a little bit more value to the background. 
So just very simply just adding a little bit more of a value. Then I'm going to go in, let's say with the stump, and uh, just make this a little bit more smooth. And at the same time, let's try to get this edge with the stump. Edge comes out here, somewhat like that. And I'll tell you what, it's nice to have a stump that is that has a lot of charcoal on it uh, so that you can go back in uh, with this charcoal that's on the stump and where you see like a little value here that needs to be applied, check that out. You can start to add some value with the stump. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Just like that, there's a little value there. So this may come in a little bit more over here. Not quite sure. And then let's not forget this dark that we had before, just to show that something down here exists. A little division for the beard back here. And I'm just gonna smoothen that out. Just like that. Very simply, just making it more smooth. Come back in with this shape here. This isn't really my favorite paper to work on. I uh, actually kind of like Canson paper a little bit more. Uh, but I like this paper kind of just as much. It's just uh, with this kind of paper that I used, it's, it's kind of more for studies, which is what this drawing is. It's a classical portrait drawing study. Uh, but if I want to come back into this uh, in multiple days and uh, try to further push these values, the paper, this paper at least, will kind of start to fall apart, I've noticed. But for something like this, a drawing that takes maybe I don't know, a couple hours out of the day. It, it does the job, but if uh, I want to do something more refined, then I'll use something like a Canson, Canson paper. Again, I'm not really trying to, I'm not trying to advertise any brands. I'm telling you the truth in terms of what materials I like to use. The shape comes out a little bit more there. I think I might be giving him too much beard, so at the same time I'm going to push the beard up. And I'm also going to add some little shapes here. Why not? It's just some little shapes. As it wraps around there. And let's let's make some kind of little vignette like this. Just a little vignette. So that comes up here. And then let's add just a little glimpse of dark over here. Just like that. Let's even hatch a little bit here. Just like that. Let's let some of the marks show. Some of the little hatch marks here show. Just like that. Angled in this kind of direction. And um, at this point I'm kind of tinkering with the beard. So I'll tell you what, I think that may be the conclusion of this portrait drawing tutorial. Uh, trying to look at portrait drawing from more of a classical standpoint. So, there you have it. Now let's just cut a little bit here. So, there you have it. I hope that this, this portrait drawing video helps you out and at least shows you how you can use the materials to your advantage. And at the same time, hopefully it gives you more of a classical overview of portrait drawing. So I hope this helps you out and thank you so much for watching my videos and I will catch you on the next video. Take care and have a wonderful week.